Hey guys, welcome to Two Seals and a Walrus. We're going to chop the episode up today into two different sections and put it in two different places. The first portion of the conversation is going to be held at Patreon, patreon.com slash TSAW. It's Ben, Neil, and I talking about the challenges that law enforcement is facing today and some of the stories that occurred out of the Atlanta area that never hit the national news. And you may want to check that out if that's an interest to you. And the second portion you're going to see right here right now is uh, a discussion about a Schedule 1 controlled substance and how that Schedule 1 controlled substance needs to be rescheduled and Neil's experience where he traveled to a place where it's legal and experienced this substance. And we talk about that moving forward. Hope this message finds you well. We love you guys. Talk to you soon. Peace. Two seals. And a walrus. Hey guys, welcome to Two Seals and a Walrus. I am your co-host, Sean Webb, and with me always, Ben Johnson across the table, United States Navy SEAL sniper medic, and in our empty chair, we have Doug, who's out today spending some time with family, uh, And uh, but we're going to do an episode regardless, because sometimes uh, we all have busy lives, and sometimes we can make it, and sometimes we can't. But here we are. We wanted to thank you guys for making it. And we wanted to point out that you guys are uh, starting to gain a little momentum in the uh, subscribership arena. And we wanted to thank and say hi to all the new folks who've been subscribing just recently. We're up to over 5,000, almost 6,000 subs. And we just wanted to say thanks. Appreciate your time. And thanks for hanging out with us. We love to geek out on these topics that we talk about as much as you guys do. And we really appreciate your spending your time with us on this show today we really don't have that bench of a a big agenda set except for some catching up and some really cool topics and making fun of some stuff that's been going on in the current event news etc um uh, one of the things that uh ben and i had talked about previously that had come up on tiktok like if you guys have been following tiktok um i'm near i guess a half a million viewers subscribers on tiktok and been picking up a lot of uh the trends on what's going on in social media connected with that because of the comments that are being made on my videos and stuff like that. And so I wanted to cover some of that stuff. Uh, There's more alien stuff that we're going to talk about today with the brand new release of another video about uh, UAPs over uh, Navy air or Navy uh, destroyers and whatnot. And the Pentagon and the Navy just saying, yup, aliens. So... (laughs) That took is like that, a, is that where it is now? Ba- basically, it <laughs> took them three days. I mean, the the video that they released was officially from 2019. So I haven't seen it. So. Okay, so it's a it's a green it's a night vision uh, green scope uh, that's a a visual of um, uh, these triangular craft, but it looks more like an upside down pyramid or an inverted pyramid. Uh, that are flying around above these Navy ships, and it was uh, the Pentagon had confirmed that uh, Navy personnel took... Not a kite. Right, not a kite, <laughs> not, a, not a weather balloon. Navy personnel had taken the images from Navy uh, ships, and that they, uh, the Pentagon and the Navy are both identifying them as unknown and not ours and not Chinese and not Russian, and they're just like, yup, we don't know, even though they may know, but... So we are colluding with Russia and China. Right, exactly. Colluding in the cover-up of alien spacecraft. But, uh, yeah, so we're seeing these things, and, of course, there's always the speculation. You have to have the caveat, the little star, the little asterisk in every uh, uh, public article put out for the folks who are just not ready for this information yet, where there's always that last paragraph that says, oh, it could be just drones from another country. It could be just, you know, whatever, unexplained aerial phenomenon, et cetera. It doesn't have to be aliens, et cetera. Uh, they always put that little asterisk in there for the psychological well-being of the folks who just need to deny it and who aren't ready for it yet. Uh, but, uh, the, yeah, the Pentagon and the Navy is getting really short uh, fused on on uh, saying, well, you know, we're not exactly sh-. They're just like, yeah. It's not ours. It's not anybody else's. It's breaking all the known laws of uh, physics that we've tried to figure it out. And uh, so here we are. Speaking of um, dosing people with mushrooms. <laughs> Transition. <laughs> our, uh, our producer may or may not have taken a trip somewhere to where... Uh, Mushrooms were illegal, and uh, we may have experienced a little bit of a... Yeah, it was an accidental, but it was not a I'm sad about it moment. Nice. Um, 
so I was going down the microdosing route, but I didn't really know what microdosing was, <laughs> and I didn't really in- introduce myself. So I take, instead of taking the actual recommended dose for a microdose, I took the recommended dose for a full-on deep trip. Nice. And as I'm laying there in darkness listening to some psychedelic tunes, I got to see a lot of cool things. I got to come and go to a realization with my conscious, my subconscious, and I just pretty much... <sighs> As Christians would say, Jesus, take the wheel and just let it go. <laughs> and uh, I saw some pretty cool stuff, and I found a lot of cool things out about myself that I've been suppressing for years and years and years. Wow. And I've let myself let go of that. So I don't know if you guys, you obviously do know what, there was a, a ball that you could play with mm-hmm. when you were a kid, and you could like stretch it out, and it was all these different colors, and it had like a range of different colors. Now what I saw when I was going through this and now, so let me, all right, let me go back a little bit. Because all right. I want to lay out everything to you. So I'm, I'm watching all these videos and doing a lot of research on what microdosing is. And it's like, take this amount. So I took that amount and I sat there on the couch at this place for like a half an hour and nothing happened. Yeah. Now I was a stoner for like seven years and I'm like, all right, this shit should have happened by now. So I went ahead and I doubled it up and then took it again. And I was like, this is totally going to work now. Right. And I lay down on the, the floor, and I was like, okay, I'm super scared. What happens if I have, like, a bad trip and all this stuff? Like, you hear all these horror stories online, and, like, oh, you, you don't have a spirit guide. You're not going to go on a good good version. But I just told myself, I was like, all right, I trust it. Whatever happens is going to happen. I'm just going to trust in the process. I'm just going to see what happens. I closed my eyes. And at that moment, it was like I just dropped. And I was not in control of anything. I didn't move. I had a big ass smile on my face, I could feel it on my cheeks, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I watched this ball, and it was starting to come up, and it started to spin in front of me, and it was going up like this, and it started to spin and spin and spin and spin and spin, and it was like one of those things that I saw when I was a kid, except the colors weren't colors, they were lights, like LED lights, and it was just amazing, and it was immaculate, and there was a whole bunch of little like spotlights on the ceiling where I was at, and it was just like this cool, trance, like just chilling thing, but there was a black like strip that went across the whole entire middle of the ball Mm -hmm. so i could see all these colors and then like nothing across the middle of the ball and as it spun around in front of me and i'm just like just sitting there and the time is going by like feels like forever there's a little lock like i could see a lock on the ball and i'm sitting there and my just thinking to myself like what the fuck is this lock (laughs) right and then something told me unlock the lock and uh, i was very hesitant at first and then Shit started to get a little, like, it was like, you need to unlock this fucking lock. <laughs> so, what's in the box? In my brain, I put a key into the lock and I turned the lock and I unlocked it. And then the black line started to dissolve. And as I was watching the colors of the rest of the ball come in and the black disappear, something told me when you have things that affect you and you hold on to them, you're losing the good color of everything that's happening around you. You're losing a part of your reality that's there that's not letting you feel all the good so you're only getting a portion of what's good if you let the things that come negatively affect you and you hold on to them so when they affect you negatively deal with it and move on i got to see past traumas of my life from when i was a kid come in and i just got to watch it and revisit it but it was like a slideshow of a movie and then it just disappeared and i haven't felt negative about that stuff since um Let's see. That's amazing. That's just one part of it. Like, <laughs> this is just like the That's first the beginning. Yeah. 15 minutes of this this time that I spent in this, this realm. And it was phenomenal. It was eye-opening, and it's changed the way that I act as a person based off just that one little bit. After that, I've been deeply, deeply thinking about my grandfather for the past two years since his passing, three years since his passing. You know the typical, like, would he be proud of me? Am I doing what he would want me to do? Is he watching down from me and this type of stuff? Yeah. That pseudo-heaven type feeling, like, if he's here, he's got to be watching me. He's got to be knowing what's going on. Yeah. I got to see him. Yep. I got to see him, and I got I got to say, hey, am I doing good shit? And he's like, yeah. You could spice up the dad jokes a little bit more, but you're doing good <laughs> stuff. I like it. And I was like... I had this self like reassurance happening too, like you know I'm on the right path. I just have to trust myself. Yeah. And then I went up past him, my great grandfather. I got to see all these other like dead relatives I never never even met my wife before were there, and they were like giving me hugs and stuff. And I'm just laying on the floor. 
Yeah. Like, I opened my eyes, and I didn't trust myself, and I didn't trust it at the time. I was like, this has got to be some... I'm dreaming this. i got to be sleeping. So I woke up, and I tr- and then it was like the world was doing weird stuff outside, so I closed my eyes. And my subconscious was like, trust me. Don't leave me. My subconscious is kind of a... Uh, narcissistic needy person <laughs> because every single time i try to get away from it or try to like ground myself uh-huh. it would punish me for it <laughs> and i didn't realize that until like 4 a.m in the morning when everything should have been done that it wasn't done and i was trying to force myself to go to sleep and the bed was not moving or the bed wouldn't stop moving and stuff like that which was the bad part right but um, as soon as i trusted myself again i went to the deepest sleep possible but back <laughs> going back past the dead relative part i moved past that and it was like I was floating through, for lack of a better term, space. And it was just beautiful colors and there was just, it was just foreverness in yeah. front of me. And the weirdest thing, and this is where I, I, I'm having trouble comprehending this. There was a tablet, not like an iPad tablet, but like a stone tablet floating through this foreverness. And it had... I want to say runic looking things etched into it, mm-hmm. but it was just floating and spinning and doing this thing right here as it spun past me. And I could not read it, but I could totally tell that there was writings around there. Yeah. And something inside me told me that's actually floating out there because one, I can deal with my negative things and have a good, good life and good viewpoint on stuff outside. Right. Two, my dead relatives are happy with me. I, I believe hundred percent believe that. What is going to stop me from hundred percent believing that there is something floating, a tablet with runes somewhere that I need to find? Wow, out in space somewhere. Out in space somewhere. Wow. That it is either we're going to know about it in the time that I'm alive, or it's been sent out there, or something. Or maybe you maybe you have access to it if you go a little deeper, you can see what's on there. Yeah. Wow. Something. Or maybe you saw it floating in space before, and it's here now. Ooh, maybe but that was and then after that i kind of like was like i gotta ground myself this is getting too fucking crazy so i forced myself to ground a little bit i got super freaking hungry so i ate 90 percent of the stuff that was in the fridge <laughs> um, and then i looked down at everything i was as i was throwing it away all the wrappers and stuff I was like holy shit i ate all of this <laughs> like <laughs> Where did I put it? <laughs> and then I was like, all right, I got to go to sleep because I have to work it in like 12 hours. So I need to get back to sleep and go yeah. back home. And uh, I laid in bed and it was just would not let me go to sleep. It's like, I'm not done with you. I'm not done with you yet. And then I just, I tried to fight it. And then I was like, you know what? Just let it go. Yeah. Just hold it. Just let, just let it do its thing. And I just laid there and it gave me that show with that ball again. But every single thing was open. It showed me all the lights. It gave me some cool cool vibes to it and then i just went to the deepest sleep i possibly i slept like a baby i woke up the next day and ever since that day i have come into my life looking at things saying nothing's gonna affect me the same anymore yeah i don't feel anger like stuff i mean don't get me wrong like stuff will piss me off like i'm not gonna lie to you sure but it doesn't resonate as long as it did before right it affects me i realize why it affected me and then I moved past it. And I tell you, I have been the happiest I've been since I can remember. Well, the science on that stuff bears that out because, you know, even the earliest published study from Johns Hopkins, uh, 34% of those people said it was the most profound experience of their life. And another 33% said it was in the top five. And then almost all of the rest, except for a couple of people who had resistive, yeah, you know, 98 plus percent. Yeah, yeah. Bad trips or whatever. Uh, there were a couple people and then there were three people who didn't have any effect at all. Kind of, they were, they were, uh, a little, um, immune to, uh, the active compound maybe, but everybody in that group, except for a couple of people were like, holy shit, this is amazing. And it, and they did a follow-up study 20 years later with the one time use, like uh, people never went back to it ever again. The one time experience positively affected their emotional well being and their psychological well being for decades to come yeah, after. It's pervasive. Yeah. So I, that doesn't surprise me at all that and that, that that this wouldn't continue to to uh, develop within you to have that amazing, awesome <clears throat> kind of equanimity 
regardless of what's going on outside of you. And you don't have to have psychedelics to get there. You don't have to have an active uh, ingredient uh, that uh, helps your subconscious meet your conscious and and, dump all that intelligence that you've been missing up into your waking awareness. You don't have to have that. You can certainly do it in other ways. I wrote a book about it. But um, Plug. Book plug. Boom. There it is. Uh, But, you know, when you do... Uh, you know, it's four. I mean, they're finding it's four times as effective as any 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 depressant on the market. Uh, psilocybin is for from mushrooms. I mean, it's like how can you not have a positive experience from something like that? There's wisdom in that plant. There's wisdom in the fungi. Yeah. Neither plant nor animal. Yeah. Well, fungi, right? And it's very similar to how our human brain works, right? It's very very similar. So overall, positive, negative. Was there any negative aspect to it besides? Sounds you know, pretty shitty. Yeah, it sounds horrible. It, sounded, it, sounded, it felt like absolute dog shit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, the only negative thing I would say is the day after that that happened, and I understand that is because it was not a medicinal dose or a regular dose. Is like I absolutely felt my stomach was going to die, and I don't know if it was the tea that I put in with it when I drank it, but it was just like or oh, all shit. the fucking food. Shit, my brains. Out. It could have been the food. <laughs> But it was just like this adverse, we'll, like... We'll discuss that in later, Neil. Okay. <laughs> Make a couple of rookie moves. <laughs> yeah. Probably rookie moves. Cause Sorry, it's not I'll your fault. You. It was like the first time, right? Yeah, yeah very first time. Yeah. But, good, uh, dude. yeah. I, I don't know. But that was the only bad thing. It was like the day after that, it was just like... Ugh. Well, I mean, other than that, the experience itself was 100%, 1,000% positive. I mean... There were some times when it was shaky, but I mean, once you figure out in your own brain that you need to just trust it, you just need to trust the yeah. process. Let your body and let your mind tell you what it wants to tell you. Yes. Don't fight it. Don't. As resist. soon as you don't fight it, and that was a really struggle for me because you know when when you smoke weed and you're high, like you still control everything. Yeah. Like you you may be slower on your reflexes, you but you you feel good. You still control everything. This I didn't really need to. Con- I it, I wasn't doing anything and it was doing itself. Yeah. And as soon as I trusted that, it was like the most positive thing ever. Like I want to tell everybody, just do it. Yeah. Like don't watch a YouTube video and then do it, but like get someone who knows what they're doing, tell you how to do it, and then do it. And that's why I push to people towards microdosing because there's a sub, you know, there's a sub perception uh, dose where <clears throat> you take just a little bit, and it's actually better for your brain to take psilocybin in microdose form than it is in macrodose form from a uh, study perspective, from the studies that they've done. Potentially, it's... Yeah, yeah. I mean, but as far as neurogenesis goes, microdosing is more effective than macrodosing for neurogenesis and growing new brain cells with uh, psilocybin and different function, or different por- um, versions of right. uh, mushroom fruiting body. Um I push towards people towards microdosing without hesitation, knowing that you know the problems that people might have would be with a macro dose. With a micro dose, there's going to be nothing but positive uh, results. Yeah. Uh, at least the science is supporting that from from this point. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's super exciting. Oh, don't 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 miss the fact that I'm list- mm-hmm. I'm wearing a do you even microdose bro <clears throat> shirt. Which is a new meme that you guys should jump on right now. Go to twoseelsandwalrus.com and buy one of these t-shirts for us because it helps support the podcast, helps support our efforts for lobbying for the legalization reschedule of psilocybin so that we can start treating veterans with PTSD and traumatic brain injury with... And everybody. And everybody with the most uh, potent brain vitamin that exists on the planet that God makes daily. And you can walk around and pick it up from the ground. Uh, sorry. Or from Harvest Connect. <laughs> or from Harvest Connect, who's doing <laughs> research right now to do delivery of <clears throat> uh, chemical substances as soon as they're descheduled. So, yeah. Yeah, and on top of that, it's like the effects of it isn't just the time that you take it. So when you smoke weed and you're high, like you're you're feeling good for the time that you're high, and then you come down, and then you're back down. Yeah, right. What you learn on your trip, for lack of a better term, sticks with you. Changes you forever. And you can... As long as you integrate it. Yeah, as long as you as long as long you take the lessons that you learned and apply them to your daily life, like even to this day, and it's been a couple months now that I'm still the happiest that I've ever been. Yeah. I don't let stuff affect me. Why? It, because I know that if I hold on to it, I don't see the beautiful colors of the rest of my life. It, it affects your sense of self, which then affects every bit of your emotional landscape from that moment forward for the rest of your life. And we had an amazing episode 
uh, with Jim Cohn from UVA who discusses the sense of self from a scientific perspective. Go look for that episode if you're uh, interested in that kind of stuff. He was the first person that started to prove that uh, augmentations to your sense of self can uh, basically shape your entire emotional landscape uh, you know, from here on out. And changes, like use of a psychedelic substance will change your sense of self. And then it will change your entire emotional landscape when you're not on the influence of the chemical substance for the rest of all time. Because what happened during that experience that you were on the chemical substance changed your psychological makeup. I mean, to, for the better. Mm -hmm. For the better. For the better, too. That's a, that's a key point. It's for the better. You're killing me, Smalls. And it's not something that's arguable. It's a subjective analysis of better. It is right. the person experiencing the experience, what their presumption of well and better is. Right. It is not a standardized measure. So we can confidently say you will have a better outlook. You will have a better perspective. Yeah. Barring a extreme extreme statistical outlier like the predisposition like the inevitable predisposition genetically for things like schizophrenia or psychosis like psychotic breaks yeah that were pretty much gonna happen no matter what as long as you stayed alive long enough besides that the likelihood of you not being better is virtually zero what have <clears throat> now you being connected with the nsw community and hearing anecdotal stories about people going to mexico and peru and other places like that what is what are the results that you're hearing from your special warfare community on the folks who are because i mean even uh yeah. like eddie gallagher admitted <clears throat> to go down to uh mexico and do some ayahuasca and did guys some, are leaning hard into it i mean um and he got a, he got a benefit from it <clears throat> Like he says, his life is awesome in yeah. comparison to how it was, especially with all the bullshit he had to go through. It's um, complicated, man. Like nobody deserves that kind of nonsense. And, and a lot of the uh, a lot of the military. I mean, it, it's. I get the allure of getting an insight into the SEAL team community, but the reality is, is that the the entirety of the world right now is dealing with very very traumatic issues and. In in my experience, or based on what I've heard from people in the community, people directly related to the community and in care or whatever, and some of their loved ones uh, peripheral to it, people are experiencing some very complicated, a you know atypical, abstract expression of of these psychological dysfunctions, PTSD, TBI. I mean, there, there's things that that they don't express themselves in any standard form for folks like this. Right. And especially in the regular world for folks all over dealing with things that human beings have never dealt with. We're very ill prepared as a healthcare oriented society to address a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's such a heavy lean into frontier medication, into regenerative medicine into holistic approaches holistic not meaning fucking essential oils and incense <laughs> and fucking hot rock massage not that any of those things aren't effective but right 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 the hippie on the corner with dreadlocks that could barely spell their own name is not probably not telling you all of the fucking pieces to the whole problem right holistic is definitively a, an approach that is comprised of all things make the whole yeah it's a complete approach and where western medicine has traditionally segregated mental health and physical health until the very delicate fine line of both being a psychiatry of keeping people from physically doing damage to themselves or others from mental incapacitation or dysfunction we haven't addressed these things together Mental health has been a luxury that can be afforded by very few, if any. And it's been very boxed into a tight, leash, small cage type environment where DSM-5 is leading text and it is a slightly antiquated. Yeah. <laughs> Modern medical science can grow a fucking pig heart to put in your body 
and do extremely complicated surgeries to re reassign genders to people that, with different chromosomal structures and mental health is saying that things like anxiety are pathology they're pervasive throughout the culture mm. of being a human mm -hmm. anxiety that is focused and deliberate towards productivity is called ambition right <laughs> yeah anxiety <laughs> disorders are not a thing until they're debilitating and there's a lot of other causes for that yeah you know yeah it's, they're starting to identify symptoms as uh self-awareness and a lack of emotional intelligence right. is not categorized in the dsm-5 <laughs> the lack of emotional intelligence it's best described as antisocial, and that is not that falls egregiously short. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a, a vast <laughs> understatement for sure. Yeah, so the, I guess the <laughs> short answer, so we can get ready for the next guest. Uh, NSW has recognized that they are complex, um, impressively abstract, and unique operators being tasked with very complex and unique jobs that are very unprecedented levels of devastating to the human psyche yeah and these guys are uh having a, a, a extraordinary longevity in this career unprecedented level there as well are getting out and having textbook issues for nearly two years on the dot and it very categorically similar across the board and not being treated effectively they're going out and finding these treatments by other means yeah it's effective it's productive for most people, well, some people need careful oversight and more delicate, more standard treatment or more more accompaniment and right. professional, yeah. you know, present, you know, presence. So sending guys to Mexico is not ideal. It's super effective, super productive, not ideal. Right. We want to legitimize things here and formulate a way to streamline guys into a practice that we know. And can see, and can monitor their this quantifiable linear progression, and start to take the teeth out of this beast that is chewing on our community. Right. Not just NSW, but our entire community as as Americans and as humans. Yeah. Yeah. So you're seeing positive aspects, positive results come from the NSW community. If you see anything, it's hard to ignore the positive ones. Yeah. But I'm seeing both, not in the same magnitudes, but there's definitely some tweaking that needs to be done. Yeah. If you open your eyes, it's hard not to see the positives. Nice. Nice. Well, that's what we're working on here. I mean, we've jumped on the bandwagon, and uh, we're on the train of wanting to reschedule some of these natural compounds uh, that are showing to be extremely beneficial. So if you guys want to support our podcast, uh, check us out at Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash TSAW. And uh, check out our merchandise store. Everything that you buy, we make a little bit of a profit, and all that money will be going towards our efforts to help improve the mental welfare of everyone, but especially also our returning veterans and the people who we've asked to do some non-standard jobs for us who then have uh, fallout connected with that stuff. So that's an important portion of our mission here. And if you want to be on board with that, get on board, goddammit. <laughs> Go somewhere, click a button, give us some money, give us some likes, give us some shares, tell your friends spread to subscribe, word. spread the word. We're out here trying to do some good. All right, that's it for today. I'll get off my soapbox. If you guys want a free Two Seals and a Walrus fanny pack, from Champion Sports, this is just a little a little freebie that they sent us, and no one's no one's going to wear it here. That's awesome, uh, but sure. it's a free two seals and a walrus fanny pack from Champion. If you want that sucker? We will send it to you in the mail. Just get five of your friends to get in the comments and mention your name, and the first person to do that wins. Period. We'll just send it to you. You do something for us, we're going to do something for you. Love you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you soon. Peace. To see and a walrus.